Any thought Monique Johnson had at this moment has been smothered by the accursed ticking of the clock in Horace's room. Steady streams of hot tears run down her cheeks as she bursts into the still space, her wet eyes glaring bitterly at the clock mounted on the farthest wall of the room. The wall clock stares back at her almost mockingly, and its hands never falter in their movements, never faltering in their insistent, rhythmic ticking. Tick. Tock. Tick. Tock. The taunting ticks of the black-framed clock make Monique's blood boil, and her ears ring. If she never has to hear that unbearable ticking ever again, it would be too soon. If she never has to think about what happened today ever again, it would be far too soon. She stops across the room to grab the infernal clock, and without hesitation, she makes a frenzied search for its back panel. It takes only seconds for her to find it, to yank off the panel and dig into its battery pack, flinging the batteries across the room. Finally, the ticking would stop. The torture would end. Tick, tock, tick, tock. Monique looks at the now empty battery pack quizzically. There's no way it can work without batteries, she thinks, unless it's solar powered. Only Horace would have a solar powered clock that can tick forever. Damn it, Horace. She turns the clock around to look at its face. The hands have ceased their jutted movements, now perfectly still at 12.30. Perfectly lifeless. Tick, tock, tick, tock. Monique looks around frantically, attempting to tune her hearing to the direction of the ticking. Though the longer she whips about, the more she questions whether there is any ticking at all, or if she is confusing it with the steady, pounding headache beneath the skin of her temples. She listens closer, praying that she hasn't lost her mind. Tick. Tick, tock, the drawer. Monique sprints heel and toe to the mahogany drawer, making haste and pulling it open with a violent jerk. She quickly steadies herself and dashes to the aid of a wobbling, potted plant that had been one swift breeze from toppling off the drawer's surface. With a relieved exhale, she returns her attention to the open drawer with an anxious anticipation for what she may find. Nothing particularly interesting. Well, nothing at all, really, except for rising dust motes and an old pocket watch, its faint ticks no longer muffled by the confinement of the dusty drawer. There you are, she mutters with a smirk, and she carefully picks up the antique timepiece by its chain, setting it square in the palm of her other hand. It's a pretty thing, she thinks. Pretty old, too. An ancient relic, holding the memories of a time long gone. An engraved image decorates the watch's outer cover. A clock tower that looks something akin to London's Big Ben, embedded into a half-moon of gears and cogs. Intense curiosity subdues her, and it urges her to pry the timepiece open in an attempt to discover more of its intricate features an attempt to understand how an old grump like Horace could ever be the owner of such a delicate, refined object. She looks at the small, moving hands of the watch's face, admiring the minuscule but ornate details of its design. Her eyes wander over the inner cover. A map. A map of a land she's never seen in any history book, as far as she's aware. It almost looks like a Pangea of sorts, a huge mass with oddly shaped chunks of land just barely separated by what she could only assume to be winding rivers. She hums, momentarily distracted from her task. Press the dial. Stop the ticking. She pushes her thumb firmly onto the dial at the top of the watch, waiting for its insistent ticking to stop. But it never does. The watch does something normal watches shouldn't do, because for the life of her she has never seen a normal watch glow like that. 
Monique feels the watch awaken in the palm of her hand, glowing a blinding arland hue as its hands spin violently on their axes. Her breath quickens anxiously, and then in a presumed act of mimicry, the watch's ticking quickens its own pace to match hers. Tick-tock, tick-tock. The fierce buzz of something odd, something magic, courses through her fingertips, shooting up her arms and deep within her marrow. Something is changing. Is she changing? Or is it everything else? Monique Johnson can't answer the question even if she tried, only bringing herself to gawk in frozen horror and enthrallment as her view becomes obstructed by streams of golden light permeating about the room. She attempts desperately to peek through the openings between the ribbons encircling her, yet she can only catch faint glimpses of Horace's room. It takes no time at all for it to warp and twist, morphing into something that no longer resembles Horace's room anymore. A blurred dirt bird. A clock tower in the distance. And then black.